Hi, everyone. Welcome back to The Danny Show. Uh, today, I have a special guest. Her name is Maria Perez. So Maria Perez is a dedicated university student specializing in visual communication with a keen uh, eye for design and a passion for storytelling through images. Maria brings creativity and innovation to every project. Profession in graphic design software and armed with a strong foundation in visual theory, she strives to create compelling visual narratives that resonate with audiences across various mediums. Eager to collaborate and explore the intersection of art and communication, Maria is poised to make a meaningful impact in the dynamic world of visual communication. And now Miss Maria Perez joins me live. How are you doing, Maria? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. So, um... First question, what initially drew you to pursue Guelph Humber's Media and Communication Studies program? Right. Um, there were so many options that I looked at back in grade 12. It seems so far away now, <laughs> thinking mm -hmm. that I was closer to graduating than I was when I applied to GH. Right. Um, there are so many factors that came into it. I had a dear friend of mine who initially came to GH uh, mm -hmm. for a different program. I think he was in psychology. Mm -hmm. So he was really the one that introduced me to the university. And then I kind of looked at their program, saw what, um, you know, things that they were going to teach us throughout the years, their different um, specializations that they had. And that all really intrigued me how right. how it was all kind of broken down into. Right. I like And uh, that's why. Oh, I see. Well, that's nice to hear. So. Why did you choose the visual communication stream of things and then, like respect to the other ones? Why visual communication? Yeah. Um, so visual communications, for those who don't know, it is mainly um, at GH, we do a lot of photography, videography, and graphic design, right? right. Um, right. So I work at... Um, on campus, which is called the Media Cage, where basically we handle a lot of uh, the equipment that is used in visual communications, right? You know, right. especially, right? right. Um, you know, cameras, rentals for tripods, all the lighting equipment and all that, right? So I had kind of a little insight of what it was really when it came to the hard work of it. And I think that that really drew me in, you know, working with your hands, physically doing something that you can consider after like you put the effort in to call it yours. Right. right? So I really like working with my hands. I really like um, coming up with a concept, like learning about something, coming up with my own concept and then actually being able to execute it and then have a product that you call it yours. I really got, that's what really drew me in and it really hooked me on. Oh, that's 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 great. So, like, basically, videography is is mostly your interest. No, I actually like more photography. Okay, because um, you said hands on, so I thought it was videography. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, we have a class. Obviously, it's called uh, lighting studio lighting. So, uh, <laughs> I think that's more physical <laughs> than right. videography. Right, right. But, uh, a lot of people they do it either in partners or individually. That class. Right. For me, the way that our class was split, I was able to do it individually. So I didn't really have a partner. Mm -hmm. So I had to do everything alone. So I, that's why I said it's a lot more physical work. Mm -hmm. um, so I really liked because I was able to get a lot of work or a lot of experience and just doing a whole setup alone and then taking down it alone. So I really got to know the equipment very well, how to handle it very well rather than having someone or like to rely on somebody that's that's great to hear so i guess like just doing all the dirty work yourself and just basically assembling like the camera the different lightings and and since you've like liked the studio lighting course what type of like uh what, what's it called like what, what type of coursework has really just interested you like what type of projects you have you done that that really stand out to you and with our right. with all regards to all the aspects in visual communication. Yeah, I mean, we do have quite a few projects that we could be able, like we can consider to be proud of. Um, mm -hmm. One of them that really stood out to me is um, my final three images for Studio Lightning, which yeah. I actually have here. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know where the other one went, actually. Um, 
Um, it was a Christmas theme photo shoot, mm -hmm. and I I spent about like a good four hours per photo shoot. So I really enjoyed because I really got to do every little detail, like just look how perfect it was, just to take a picture and say, yeah, that's how it kind of was laid out in my house. But in reality, it was in studio. Um, every single aspect, every single little light was where exactly where I wanted it to be. So I had full control of everything. And that's kind of what I liked. Um, that's one of the pictures that I'm most proud of. I can't, I don't remember where the other one is. But um, if you go on my Instagram or my um, on my website, you can see there's one of a uh, like a hot chocolate. Mm -hmm. that, that's my favorite one. I love it. It really does feel like it's a hot chocolate, but there's nothing inside of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's so cool. Yeah, um, check her out on Instagram and her website. Put the links in the description down below for you all to go check it out. Um, but yeah, so so right now, um, you're you're. I know that visual communication students do do the studio course, but it's a prerequisite to location photography. So speak on like location photography and how like that kind of is different than the studio environment, or how it's kind of similar in some some shape or form. Right. Uh, it's completely different. <laughs> mm, okay. Uh, there's so many new factors to consider. So you're taking kind of the basics or all of the knowledge that you learned in studio, which is all the types of lighting, how lighting works, how you want to manipulate to make a good picture, how to light it very well. But when it's studio, you control all the lights. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Because the studio, it goes completely dark and then you turn on whatever lights you want to turn on. When you're on location, it's outside of the studio. It is the sun. <laughs> That's, the sun is your main source of light. Right. And the sun changes. Our weather here in Canada changes. So all the type of lights that we get whenever we go outside or inside, it changes completely. So it's been quite a big uh, like learning curve for I think a lot of people who um, only started photography for studios such as myself. Right. right. Um, it's kind of unlearning some things and now relearning certain aspects in a different way. Mm -hmm. So like, mm -hmm. how lighting works. Okay, you knew how to do it here. Now you kind of just have to apply what you knew here into a new setting with, you know, the sun and like on flash cameras and all those things to obviously make a good picture, but in a environment that you don't create. I see. No, that's really interesting. I think both both courses do help you out a lot, if, especially if you are very much interested in visual communication, you get both the studio experience and the location photography experience. I think that's very beneficial for any photography because you got to be in the studio for some of the time some of the times you got to get out get out of your comfort zone and i think photography does teach you how to get out your comfort zone whether you're in the studio or not i think just the setup of all the cameras and the lighting is is difficult in itself and then now to go outside is just a whole nother obstacle as well but yeah thanks for sharing um also i wanted to know like i know in guelph humber um it's everything's just general courses in the first two years and then you get specialized in your third year um how has the experience overall been like for you as Guelph Humber students first to like right now you're in your third year right so yeah um I like it there were I wish there was a few factors that we could change or yeah. something yeah like please that. tell me please tell me the, the changes yeah yeah, um, overall, I've enjoyed it. Obviously, uh, when I came, so my first year, it was kind of that transition of COVID. It was like kind of COVID, kind of not. There were some like mini waves of COVID right. throughout, right? So it was kind of very isolating. Right. So that, that wasn't as fun. But second year and now obviously third year, COVID really, like it, it it's done now, I hope. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And then I obviously got, I was able to get the full experience of, of the campus, of the people, of our profs, the people that, you know, you meet along uh, the hallways. And I really enjoyed it. Uh, first year was very difficult because it was very isolating. Um, mm -hmm. I remember obviously everybody kind of was scared because we had just come out of high school. And then for my experience, I hadn't been in a class since what, like, grade 11 
grade I would 11. Think yeah, wow. Grade 11 or like end of grade 10. I don't know. I don't remember. The, I think it was yeah. like grade 11. Right. Uh, yeah, I think it was second semester of grade 11. So like the winter that I hadn't been in an actual class without COVID, right? So everybody's scared. Everybody, you know, it's a new campus, new people, new profs. Everybody's obviously shy in their first year or first semester at anything, university, college, and, or like any higher up education. Like if you're scared, you don't know where you're going, what you're doing, right? Um, exactly. But COVID didn't help. <laughs> no, it didn't. <laughs> No, I didn't. But uh, I'm glad that the first year courses, there were quite a few, um, like our profs knew of the situation, obviously, that we were scared and stuff like that. So they would put in, put us into groups, do a lot of group work. So like, there would be like a physical icebreaker that we couldn't just, you know, just hush around it. <laughs> there was just like, you guys are in groups, talk. <laughs> and then we're like, okay, right. Um. So I like that about sec uh, first year, second year, obviously, again, we got um, more freedom. Uh, mm -hmm. I started working on campus. I think that's really a, a really good way to get involved in campus. Sure, because sure is, yeah. One of the things that I don't like that much that I know the, um, they're working on is the student life. Um, Guelph Humber is very, very low on their student life. They're trying to obviously bring more events and be more um, caring about their student when it comes to just letting them enjoy campus. Exactly. But yeah, like that's one thing that they lack. And I understand again, for my year and your year, half of it was COVID, I understand yeah. that, right? Yeah. But this year, like last year, this year, they could have like started ramping it up a little bit. They should have, yeah. <laughs> Right. <laughs> um, but I think that's that's one of the things that I wish they they would improve on a lot more. And I know that they're trying to improve. Obviously, it can't go a full 180 from nothing to mm -hmm. 100 that easily. But right. I think that I would um, I would rather see a lot more okay. um, because if it wasn't for my job on campus, like I would not be going to I would not. I don't think I would have the connections that I have. I would not be able to um, enjoy seeing like people from other years or other specializations, right? So it's a campus that like it's it's if you want to get involved, you have to get involved. Like the yeah. the campus won't involve you in events. Like exactly, you go out seeking things. Yeah, which is very different because a lot of universities really throw big events, right? It's exactly. kind of the year like the students have to throw um themselves into the campus for them to feel involved yeah i know what you mean like i think yeah like you said like big universities like western university or ut or tmu they have big bigger campuses than than ours at guelph humber so they have like a lot of more events more student life is more productive for them but in contrast to us where we're a small school so it's it's not that big and I like like you said, like I, I didn't even think of that. Like our student life is really just lacking. Um like on campus, we don't have that many events unless there's like a work event, which not a lot of people go to anyway. So we need to have more events on campus. I think that's better because I think over in uh, at Humber, they have more student life there. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, they had uh, I think a um a YouTuber, I, don't, I think her name is Amelia something. Have you heard of the chicken shop date? No, no. What is that? Um, so it's this host. It's this girl who goes on dates with celebrities and they basically do interviews. And she's okay. really, she, uh, she's a host. Okay. And her, <laughs> and her thing is just like awkwardly talking to them while eating fried chicken. Um. Oh. She's really famous. Like I, I, really, I find her funny. She's from, <laughs> I think, or like the UK, okay. and and she came I think last week to talk to um, Humber students about you know content creation and how to host and all those things. And it was really interesting, but unfortunately I couldn't go because it was during one of my classes. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, they do things like this. It's huge. Yeah. She's huge. Like I think Whoa. she hosted. She's hosted quite a few events, like red nice. carpets. Like she's on the red carpet. Nice. So, and, okay. 
but I didn't know that. Yeah, like, you can you can see the difference between what GH has and then what Humber yeah, has. GH, like like we have some famous alumni that that I know has have come back in like the re, like in the past, but they've done like many events, but they, it didn't stand out. I think we have like alumni at Gulf Humber that should come back and do like content on social media channels and do yeah. something like that. Or like just talks, right? Mm -hmm. Just yeah, talks, talks. Students, current students, like yeah, you know, say what your experience is, like how you know how's the for like the workforce now, exactly. yeah. like, like stuff like that that you want to hear from yeah. people who has gone to your own campus, like that would be very interesting. Yeah, or even you know fun activities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, that, like school is hard. <laughs> School yeah. can be stressful, so just having maybe like a an activity that just eases your brain is mm -hmm. should be encouraged. I think. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know exactly what you mean. I know, like the Guelph Humber did a big partnership with the Raptors nine hundred five, so that was that was a great move. But they mm -hmm. haven't really. I know they've come on campus and all, like with a mascot. But I don't know. Are they running any contests with with the Raptors nine hundred five to like win tickets or do something on campus? Not recently, not that I know of, but they, they should did do have, that though. They should do that. They also have something with a hockey team that I know. Okay. I don't know if it's the Maple Leafs mm -hmm. or if it's like a, a smaller division. Mm -hmm. Maybe Smarties. Sure. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> don't don't quote me on that. I'm not sure okay. which league. But okay. I do know that I've seen the 905 Raptor. Yeah. Um, which is fun. Yeah. Yeah, that's that that that's that's great. Like that that was huge. Like I remember they even put like go Humber. They 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 um some of the students went to like uh nine oh five game that was hosted at Social Bank Arena and they had like a booth there and then they got on the jumbotron. That was that was really cool. Like we need yeah, more. I wish they would have um advertised it more because I would have loved to go. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's what yeah. I'm saying. We need more. I, I saw I saw it after the fact. I was like, huh. <laughs> I wish I could have gone. Like that's so fun. Yeah, but they, they didn't advertise it well. You know what I mean? Yeah. They need to do advertising marketing in a way that attracts a lot of Gulf Humber students because there's a lot of there's a lot of Gulf Humber students even in that small yeah. building. There's a lot, and honestly, like I like how it's close knit as well from my perspective. Yes. How about for you? Yes, I love it. I I truly love it because what an experience that my sister had at her university. She said, she always said, I'm just a number at that university. Right. Like, exactly. profs don't really know me. Mm -hmm. I don't see that pe many people, like, I don't see the same people frequently. It's very difficult to make friends because sometimes you only have, like, one or two classes together and there's, like, hundreds of kids. So you probably won't even see them ever again. So um, that was another big decision why I chose uh, GH. Mm -hmm. It was because... I knew how close knit it was. Mm -hmm. And I think, again, it goes back to, I was scared of something bigger than after high school. It was giving me like a lot of like social anxiety. I was like, I don't want to go downtown or like move <laughs> out of my house to like right. go to university to a place that I don't know with like COVID and whatnot. So GH is uh, nearby. I drive to school or I can take public transit to school, right? And right. Uh, yeah, like I know profs. I know a lot of people, even if, you know, you were not the best of friends, but because you see them so often, you actually get acquainted with them. Exactly. Um, right, 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 right. On campus, it's also such a great way to um, fall in love with the school more, be involved in the school, get to know more things at school, right? Because if you only come for class and then leave, I don't think you're really even getting the full experience of GH. No, you're really not, no. You're not. I, I know of quite a few people that as soon as class hits, they're out. And I'm like, you're paying for the money. You're here, you already paid. Like, why not, you know, make friends, go to the calf downstairs or just hang around, whatever. Like, I know... Again, there's not a lot of life to do around here, but I'm just like, enjoy it, right? Yeah. Um, like, I know so many um, staff that are so friendly. Um, they come in the morning, say hello to me. I don't know their names, but, you know, it's so nice because you make a little community, right? Exactly. You say hello to 
with this person. You said hello to the janitors. I love them. They're so nice. Yeah. Um, stuff like that. I'm just like, you would not be getting this at huge universities. No, you you're you like a whole no. different number. Like that's it. Nobody uh, yeah, would know think- you. People recognize you. That's the thing. People recognize you. They're like, oh, yeah, I know that person, right? Like, I brought in, like, um, Lulu, who, who, who you know, uh, on my show a, a couple of weeks ago. And she was saying, like, it's kind of like a high school setting again, but just in a professional, more university way, which yeah. I which I, I totally agree with her as well. And, and I like that whole experience from, from my perspective. Yeah, yeah. It can be, like, kind of um nostalgic sometimes because there's some things or some aspects that happen and you're like whoa this just put me back in like grade 10 <laughs> right yeah. then, then again like you see your friends in the hallways and all of this and then they're like oh I'm just grabbing a snack but I have to go back to class like it's stuff like that you are able to be friends with the people that are in the same building mm-hmm. right even, yeah. if, even if you don't hang out with them outside and you're they're just you know friends from school you can have friends from school at university like it is it's weird to say that at you know high-end universities like queens or um laurier or stuff like that i'm like i don't think so i think they just have their friend group and that's kind of it yeah that is it i don't think like i've seen like a lot of videos on youtube recently because i try to see how they do their, their like their own type of content and try to like mm-hmm. mimic them so what yeah. they do like i know someone who's from queens i forgot their name but they have a youtube channel and they were talking about like yeah you go to campus like i saw him go to the campus go to his lectures he had like two three friends and then they left and then when he left it was just like he's a number like you know like th- th- there's no one around him until mm-hmm. like late at nights where he goes like partying or, or something but like they're at Guelph Humber I feel like everyone's together I always see like hubs of people together in a calf or hubs of people walking or just sitting in the lot or learning comments but in yeah. Queens or in a big name university you don't get that experience you just walk in like a number and walk out and like yeah. you said you don't get one-on-one connections with your professors professors at Guelph Humber really do like you get to meet them because we have small classes like Maria yeah. you know how small our classes are we have like 10 to 20 people so that's literally like a high school setting again so our professors know us yeah and the good thing about that a lot of people might say well like that's really small like is that even yeah good? it is good because it is good. Yeah. Yeah, you get to because we're such like I don't want to talk about, you know, the justice system or sorry, the justice program or anything because I'm not in it, right? We're talking about media. Our program is so creative and initiative. Like you got to be creating things, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to learn about other people. And if you're in a class of 50 people, it's going to be hard to say, hey, you're really good at X, Y, Z. Like teach me, teach me more about, you know, this creative side of you this is very intriguing or like, Hey, let's work with, like, I, I want to see more of your style. Can I work with you on this project? Right. right? Because we're such limited amount of students in per class, you really get to make that strong connection with your classmates, but also you're able to see them, see their work, see their creativeness and say, I actually want to learn from you. Let's learn from each other. All of this while not being interrupted in a 50 plus student um, lecture. <laughs> right. I guess it, it also builds more connections because I think at Guelph Humber, I can say we do a lot of group projects, especially in our specialization. So you got to like get out of your comfort zone and meet like meet each other in person and connect with each other. Right. Yeah. Even if it's not personal, it has to be professional. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, totally. Cause uh, it's hard as like it's so hard to um, obtain a good group. For sure. Of, yeah. Like, or say like photography. Uh, sorry, videography. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to say. I'm like, okay, I want to work with these people. Okay, that's hard enough for a person who maybe doesn't like socializing, and then they have to go and get actors. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, so yeah. One yeah. like. Step one is make your group and be comfortable with them. And then step two is get out of your comfort zone even more as classmates or your friends or your neighbors or your family to be in your video 
and hope to God that they're good actors. <laughs> so your video turns out good. Right. So it's a lot of, you know, not like not caring. Like say, hey, do you want to be in my video? No. Okay, thanks. Whatever. Like it's not really going to be shown, you know, at the BAFTA or the Academy Awards or like the Cannes Awards. I'm like, it's it's a school project. <laughs> right, right. I'll be an actor. <laughs> no, I totally agree. Um, and like I wish. I wish um, Guelph Humber um, in the first two years, like I said, it's all general courses. I feel like they should have put more video or more photo courses, photography courses, or um, more of just a little bit of everything. They don't have that. It's more like theories. They have random courses in the first two years. And then in your third year, you get thrown into like a videography class that you can't even do. So like, yeah. do you agree with me on this? <laughs> I, I do um i think there is quite a maybe a little bit too much on like ethical right stuff uh because i think they had like two courses that were yeah. just uh, like the ethics of media yeah yeah we um, do. don't get me wrong i i do believe that we do need to learn about ethics because oh, no. um oh, at the i don't even want to say at the center like if you look around everywhere media is everywhere yeah, like there's is. not there's not an industry where media is not affected by it. No. Whether sure. it be PR, whether it be photography, whether it be social media, whether it be marketing, all media, companies, yeah. all um, industries need media. For sure. So we're really responsible. Like we, how as much as obviously we're not doctors nor lawyers nor, um, you know, nothing like that when it comes to, you know, pillars of society, we do have a very big like ethical part in um making content and just distributing and just showing how things are whether it be in journalism photography all of these aspects right we have a very big ethical part to make in uh, to partake in society and all that right so i do think um having an ethical course is very much necessary but i think we had like two ethical courses or something or it felt like two courses kind of intertwined into each other quite right. a lot so it's like right. i'm learning the same thing twice right i do have a bone to, a bone to pick about our media law class okay <laughs> what is it <laughs> Did you not take it? I think it's a third year course. No, I did. I did take it. I just oh, wanted okay. to the bonus you want to pick with. Well, I, I wish we, it felt more like it was a law 101 course. It was a law 101 course. I, <laughs> people say it was just like the high school law course that they took in high school. It was the same, yeah, same thing. Um, yeah, exactly. And again, I also do believe that media and law is very much necessary because for example for us freelancers we don't know how to make a contract mm -hmm. right we don't right. know how to defend ourselves for copyright or make sure that our images are not copyrighted stuff like that i'm like that is necessary well, like, no, we, is. Yeah. we need to have the law on our side none of that is taught in that course no none of that no none of that um so I I don't know there there's so many ways that there this um course could have been split up into the way I have we have our media practices course which is split it into um specializations mm -hmm. so we really get an in depth course on you know um uh, one thing that we talked about was a lot of um defamation right right say in our aspects if we're taking a picture. What is the legal aspects of us taking a picture at the angle that once uh, that we show the like a false narrative? Yeah. That's definitely right. Like we're not taking it. Say on this angle, it shows like a negative. It portrays something right. negative, mm -hmm. but on this angle, it actually shows what is really happening. Right. So if we want, if they want us to um, learn about the law, take it into something that we will actually care about. Exactly. Like. I, I could not care less about certain debates or stuff like that, that I'm like, I'm really wasting my time 
Maybe. And Maybe. Third, third year is kind of like the biggest shift because that's where we all get into our specializations. That is the biggest shift. And having, and having a course that doesn't really fit into your specialization and that you're doing like overwork, it's... Yeah, I feel like i feel like guelph humber that's what the what i don't like like that they do is they still have those general courses in your specializations i think they have to get rid of that aspect of like just not okay if it's a restricted elective like it ties into our specialization like xr and photojournalism are restricted electives i get it pick and choose that um to explore more out of like the other ones we're really specializing in but if it's just a general course, just have it done in like the first two years because we're not yeah. going to see it. Like our elective courses, it's just it, sh it just should be like a like an elective course, you know. Yeah. And like totally. they should give us more options in the first two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I agree. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. So yeah. as we're almost nearing the seven minute mark, Maria, thanks for coming on. I just have one last question. Um. So what type of like advice would you give um, anyone who is interested in coming to Guelph Humber's Media and Communication Studies program and specializing in visual communication? Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. That big advice. Um, Any pros and cons? I don't know. I would just say follow your creativity. Follow your creativity. Oh. Yeah. Sometimes our creativity leads us into streams we might not go mm -hmm. in we thought we would go into um I didn't think that I would go into photography as like an actual uh you know course or something like that but it does um just let your creativity flow yeah this couldn't couldn't have said it better honestly plain and simple Maria thank you for coming on the show uh, Maria Perez everyone you can follow her on her Instagram and her LinkedIn as well as uh, and you can also see her website has that or portfolios on it so you can check that out maria thanks so much for for doing this thank you so much danny much love